Hello, animation fans, and welcome to another iAnimate podcast. I'm your host, Larry Vasquez, and you're listening to episode 71. In this episode, we have Andrew Adbury joining us. Andrew has been one of our original feature alumni here at iAnimate. I believe he joined us the second term when we opened up our virtual doors and is currently a Pixar animator where he's working on Onward. Um, Prior to coming to Pixar, Andrew had worked at such studios as MPC, um, Blue Sky Studios, and went through Disney's talent development as well. Uh, So he's worked on uh, Rio 2, the Peanuts movie, um, and having been at Pixar, uh, such movies as Coco and The Incredibles 2 and Toy Story 4. Um, one of the neat opportunities about getting guys like this in here uh, who have been through our program, who are um, relatively young in the uh, industry, but have now made that transition from student to professional, um, it's always just a neat opportunity to kind of hear their story, how they came into the industry, maybe some of the difficulties and uh, success stories that they've had as they've kind of gone into their journey. Uh, it's just a neat opportunity to talk with our alumni and uh, see where they're at now. So uh, definitely check this one out. All right, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us in this podcast. It's always neat to get a uh, great guests in here. But um, as I was kind of mentioning to you beforehand, we had Robbie uh, a couple podcasts back and it was just neat to kind of catch up with some of our alumni. And so uh, mm-hmm. just really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Yeah, man, absolutely. Anything for you, man. All right. Well, let's jump into it. Um, I always just like hearing how, you know, everybody's unique, everybody's path's unique. So I just am always curious to see how you got into this industry that we all enjoy. Um, Was it something that you just thought you'd get into it someday or just, you know, kind of a happenstance that kind of uh, threw a curveball at you and all of a sudden kind of exposed you to this art form or something along that lines? How'd you get into animation? Yeah. um, Well, I kind of took the long way around. Um, uh, my grandma was, uh, she was, a uh, um, she was a Bob Ross painter. Um, okay. so she would, she would watch the show and she would follow along with Bob and, um, you know, she set up a little easel next to her, uh, and I would sit with her and I would paint with her. Um, and so I, I've kind of always fancied myself as an artist. Um, and because she was an artist, it was never really a foreign concept of mm. doing that. Um, you know, and, and so, um, I remember from a very early age um, thinking that that is what I was going to be, right? Gotcha. Felt in my heart and in my soul that was what I was what I was meant to do, and um, so I just kind of pursued that um, over the course of my life. Took the art classes in high school, uh, art classes in in, in college, um, and just through like just trying things different you know i like telling stories and once upon a time i was a, i was gonna be a tattoo artist and um you know i just i, I was doing comic books on the side i was doing um, uh, uh, posters for bands and things like that i was doing sculpture for comic book shops um and i was just kind of exploring different things and um you know just one thing led to another and i, I started animating and um, you know, I knew at that time, I, 2D was kind of going away and, um, 3D was kind of taking its place. And I knew that I needed to kind of do something in that realm. I kind of needed to start going that way to, to, um, I don't know, kind of make a, a living at it. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I first started out, you know, like the idea of working at Pixar or Disney or other places like that it was never really that was nothing something I never really thought I could do uh, at that time because I was you know I was just getting started I was in my 20s uh you know I wasn't I wasn't um a natural talent and so it was never really one of those things that I thought I could excel at I thought I could be I thought I could get to a place where I could be pretty decent uh-huh. and I could make a living right um that was always that was always the dream that was my metric for success was can I feed my family doing this thing? Gotcha. And yeah. I thought I could. So I, uh, I pursued that and I went to a school and, um, like a, a brick and mortar school in Orlando. And, um, I can't, I can't knock that experience because I did get a career out of it. Um, however, it was one of the schools that just taught more of the technical side of things. Mm. Whereas the artistic aspects were more of, I was kind of on my own. Um, and I did that and, 2005 okay so it was quite a while back and um 
it took, I gra after I graduated, it took me about another year and a half to get my skill sets up to where I could be employable. Um, and even then, I still wasn't very good. <laughs> um, and it just so happened, I'm from Tennessee, and it just so happened that there was a small little mom and pop studio uh, in Nashville um, that was doing some pretty cool things. And so I applied. And I think that because I was... I was from their backyard. They kind of felt sorry for me and, uh, and they brought me on. And that's pretty cool though. A, what's that? I said, that's pretty cool though. You know, you have a, yeah. I'm sure not a whole lot of animation studios there in Tennessee. And so they're willing to go, Hey, look, here's a kid who's uh, hungry about something that we do. So let's bring him on. Yeah. And that's what it was. And they were really, they were really great, very gracious with their, their time and um, you know, giving me the room to, to grow and make mistakes. And um, I was there for about six years and, and, uh, in that time, I got to, I got to animate, I got to direct, storyboard, uh, make models. That I got to do everything in the in the whole gamut of production, which was, uh, which was really great. It was very very helpful uh, in gotcha. getting where I wanted to be. So, now that would have been, you said two thousand five, six years there plus. So you'd been around two thousand eleven. That would have been uh, shortly when you came to iAnimate, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Good lead in, man. Um, yeah, because what happened was. Do my homework. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what happened was I, I was kind of getting to a place where I was feeling pretty good about uh, what I was doing. And I knew that um, if I wanted to keep going with it, right? Like, so I'm already, I'm already feeding my family. I'm doing my thing. I'm living my dream, right? I'm living that. My metric for success is, is a healthy one. And I'm taking care of my family, doing my thing. And, uh, but then I kind of, I, I kind of started feeling like I can, I, I still have plenty of room to grow. I want to do mm -hmm. more. I think I can kind of push this a little further and, and see where I can go with it. And I was, you know, obviously you know, this entire time I'm watching Pixar and Disney movies. And I'm thinking, yeah, man, I, I, I want to do that. That's it seems feasible then now, huh? Yeah. That's the kind of caliber I want to hit. And, um, but I knew that I could not do that where I was on my own. Um, I knew that I needed, uh, some, some guidance and some support and some mentoring. Um, and that was right around the time that I animate was getting started. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, it was kind of what I needed it to be. Like those were the, I knew some of the instructors and or knew of them. I didn't know anybody at the time. Right. <laughs> um, not from Tennessee, huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> who were some I, of your um, first uh, instructors? Um, Michael Kiley was, uh, was a big one. Uh, uh. Um, oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank. Um, <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, some of your work from Michael Kiley's class. He was yeah, at Dreamworks Michael, at the time there. Worked yeah, Michael a lot Kiley of, was, was the big one. He yeah. was, he was the one that kind of helped me get over my hump. Um, uh, Ken was another that's what I thought, Ken Fountain, yeah. Yeah, Ken Fountain, who I ended up working with at Blue Sky for a brief moment, which was I did see fantastic. that on your IMDb, yeah, with uh, Peanuts. Yeah. yeah Very yeah. cool. Um, so that was kind of cool, kind of getting neat. to work alongside my mentor. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I, um, I started doing that, and about 12 months into the program, um, I, yeah, I guess it was about 12 months. Um, but in that time, I... Uh, I was, I was in Michael's class and I remember, I remember writing an email to him and just saying, man, you know, I really want to push myself on this exercise. I want to dig deep. Don't pull any punches, you know, really kind of help me get this thing to be something special. Gotcha. And he, um, it, it wonderfully, wonderful as he is, he, he took me seriously and, and he really, uh, really, really pushed me to, to make it, um, some th this one exercise really nice. It's the the clown shot with oh yes 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 running out of the thing uh -huh. and all that. Yeah, um, that one's fantastic. I've mean, been riding that shot's coattails for <laughs> years now. I might. I don't know if we even have it on the website right now on the front page. At least we did not too long ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, that one turned out really really good. Um, that's too funny. Thanks. That was the one, huh? Yeah, I, but you know, I think um, you know when I when I started applying to places, that was kind of the one that. Um, people kind of looked at and gravitated to, and um, you know, I, there's some reasons for it. I think the, you know, looking back on it now, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, my polish is, you know, pretty rough on this, and I would do this, and I would do that, and I would change this, and I would change that. But at the time, the the 
I think that the the ideas and the specificity of it, um, of the acting choices, I think mm -hmm. um, I just kind of stumbled into them as Michael led me to them. Uh, so I don't know. It worked out. That's um, great. Because it so, caught a little bit of interest. And, so uh, what was where, where'd you jump to from there? With this, this oh one. yeah, this one's a, this is an actually a pretty interesting scenario. So I was um, I was still working in Nashville, um, and the studios two, magnetic dreams magnetic dreams yeah perfect okay yeah um, I got I got to give a shout out to them because uh, you also um, helped get my younger brother Daryl mm -hmm. who was one of our students and alumni um, his first gig. And mm -hmm. it was out there. Um, yeah. so that was really, really cool. That's a, that's yeah. a good opportunity. So yeah, and it's a lot of fun. I love your brother, man. He's the best. Yeah, he's a great guy. <laughs> My business partner now. So at, yeah. at our studio. So it's nice to uh, be working with him on a lot of the stuff that, you know, we've trained up doing. So mm -hmm. cool, man. Yes. All right. So go ahead and continue. Yeah. So I was, um, I was still working in Nashville and I was, uh, you know, putting in the late nights that I animate and um, you know, just trying to get better, trying to get better. And I finally kind of broke through a little bit because, um, you know, a, a, a friend of Michael's, uh, who is a supervisor at Disney, uh, had reached, or I, I don't know if they were just talking or, or, or however, but I don't know how, how that scenario went, but Michael passed on, um, my shot to, to that person. And, um, I was, it was highly, I was highly encouraged to apply for their, um, talent development program. So I did oh, okay. that. I didn't know you went through that, did that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I did that, yeah. I did that for six months, but there's, there's a thing to it though. Okay. Um, <laughs> around that same time, um, the, this, there was a studio that opened up in Florida. Um, it was, I forget the name of it, but it was owned by digital domain. Okay. I don't know if you remember this, this whole, uh, this whole thing, but, uh -uh. um, but that studio, um, they were working on a film called the legend of Tembo. This brand new studio just got built, built a special studio for it. Okay. I'm um, kind of remembering, but yeah, keep going. Yeah. 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 And so, um, I had a friend, uh, that worked there and, uh, and they helped me get a job as an animator. I got hired. And, um, I remember I, I at the same time I got hired, I also got offered um, the Taldev program. And I remember calling the recruiter and I'm like, oh, you know, I'd love to come out and, and, and do this with you guys, but you know, I got this job and I got a family and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I just, I, I don't know what to do. And he was like, why don't you think about it for a little bit and get back to me? And I'm like, okay. And so I, um, you know, I didn't know what to do with that. So I'm just like, all right, okay. Cause I already made up my mind, right? I'm going to go do this job uh -huh. and get paid and be an animator. Um, but then like literally two days later, um, the, I got word that the, there were some things happening at the studio and I called right. my friend. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, ah, don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> the very next day he calls me up at like six in the morning. I'm on the treadmill and he's like, yeah, dude, I can't even get to my desk. They just shut the studio down. Right? Dang. Drop my phone. I fall off the treadmill. I'm like, Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? <laughs> and I immediately called the, the recruiter at Disney. I'm like, Oh, is that offer still on the table? <laughs> so, like, yeah, we were expecting your call. <laughs> yeah. So, Cause that was basically, they were kind of hiring students to train them, but use them for work and that kind of stuff. Or at least yeah. that was kind of the persona that was out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They had some serious, um, serious money issues. It seems. Okay. And some, some, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the specifics of it. I just know right. it was no good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, man, fantastic timing because totally, it allowed you to still get in over there at Disney. Yeah. I mean, I, I dodged a bullet. <laughs> You know, aimed right here. You know? Yeah. So I, I, I thank my lucky stars every day for that one. Yeah. Because um, it could have, you know, I, I, it's interesting, right? Like I was, I had, uh, I had sold my house and we were two weeks away from moving down there when all this happened. This was in Tennessee. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And so like, we were like full bore on our way. You know, we were, you know, looking at houses and stuff like that. We we're going to buy a house and all that. Um. You know, so it, you know, the fact that we didn't have to go through that because there are so many people who are already down there that, that gotcha, that got yeah, royally screwed, mm. you know, so yeah, it's a bummer, but, yeah, for sure. But you dodged it matrix style, huh? Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> yeah, and and I ended up going to Disney, 
uh, and I did the, the Talda program, which was about six months of, um, it was basically just kind of a continuation of animation training. They gave you okay. some exercises. And, you know, there's three other, um, three other animators in the group, and then we each have a, a specific mentor. And, um, you know, they give us shots, and uh, we work on those exercises with their mentorship. And it's kind of treated like a, its own little unit, or at least it was when I was in there. They might do gotcha. it very differently now. What was there, was there anything during that time that you kind of, you know, I always kind of feel like our, our paths are a little bit here and then all of a sudden, like, oh, okay, here. And then, you know, you get uh, a little bit up on that hill and then you kind of start going again and you get these little bit of um, light bulb moments. Was there anything there at Disney during the talent development program that was kind of a bit of a light bulb for you training? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think that my, my, the, the thing that I learned, the thing that they, um, really kind of push is just simplicity and not, not, not movement for movement's sake and just mm. picking a choice and making it as simple as possible. And if you don't find a good pose, work within that and don't leave it if you don't have to. Okay. You know, so it was, it was, it was just kind of taking complicated things and making them simple and clear and readable. Gotcha. Um, yeah. That was kind of the biggest thing that I worked on while I was there. Very cool. Um, Particularly yeah, for new animators who are wanting to really kind of show off what they can do or, you know, it's just, I, I'm an animator. I'm supposed to make things move, you know, mm -hmm. um, that's a, that's a great, um, word of advice there then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I would, it, it, over the years, the thing that I've, I've learned is that I would rather see a really well done head turn, <laughs> right? You know, like a really well done, um, I was talking with another animator about this not too long ago, and this is, this is their thing. Um, so I'm not making this up, but it really resonated with me. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's great. But to see, like, a really good, thoughtful, motivated, well-done head turn with meaning uh, would be way better than just seeing something, like, a, a lot of just mediocre movement, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah, yeah. There's something, there's something to that. Gotcha. Um, that I think is... is very interesting. Yeah. You know? I've told this story before, but it's been a bit kind of, but I feel like it kind of goes along that same lines. This was uh, when Jamal Bradley was over at Disney. Yeah. Um, and my brother and I had a chance to go visit him and uh, check things out. And he had this thing he had sketched out of um, kind of a king type deal. And it was, it said, are you not entertained? I said, so we talked about this. Hey, what's this about? And he said it was a story that Glenn Keane had uh, told in regards to, I forget who it was, if it was Ollie Johnston or um, who it was, but was kind of showing him, hey, you know, look at this animation, this and that, and just kind of really, man, you know, what do you think? He's like, well, it looks good, but it doesn't really move me, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was mm -hmm. kind of that idea of look look at the fidelity of the animation, but you're missing the intent why we're animating. So yeah. um, it was something that stood out to Glenn Keane and then obviously to to uh, Jamal. So it's just kind of in that same lines of what you're talking about there. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, there's this, yeah, it, there's a, at Pixar, they have this, this word that they like to throw around uh, a lot and it's, um, and it's a great word. It's called specificity mm. and it's, um, and basically all it means is making very specific uh, acting choices. And you know, that that's based off of, you know, a, you know, it's based off of a character's history and who they are and what they've been through. And, you know, they're, they're going to do whatever, whatever choices you make for this character, they're going to do it a very specific way. Mm. Um, and so it's just making sure that um, that choice is very inherent to who that character is. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's, and it, you know, a lot of times like when you, when you, you know, when, when you're, when you're talking to an animator and you and they do something really fantastic and you're like, Oh my God, how did they do that? How did they come up with that idea? Mm. And I feel like the, this, it's the specificity of that choice, right? Gotcha. Because yeah, if yeah, yeah. you know the character and you know, if you, if you know them in a sense of who they are and what they've been through, then you can kind of, Oh, and it's on prime guys here. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Um, you know, like if you know who they are, then you can kind of figure out how they would do it, you know, and then, and then to find that interesting way that only they would do something. Right. Which then you know, resonates like, to the audience then. 
Yeah, like that. Like there's that one shot, and this is you know, Cars isn't my favorite movie by far, but there's that one shot of Lightning McQueen, and he's uh, flying over the crowd, and he's got his tongue out, and he's got his wheels doing his thing. Right? It's very iconic, very uh-huh. iconic image. But it's it's the specificity of it, right? Because in that one image, you know exactly who that character is, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? You know, and it's there's nothing to that shot, of frame by frame, it, and it's just a slow motion pose <laughs> you know, yeah. that kind of grows and shrinks. Um, so technically, there's there's not a whole lot going on with it, but it's Lightning McQueen, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. So, so then, from the Disney talent development. You were at six months there. How did that work finishing off? Yeah, so I, was, I did that program for, uh, for about six months, and, um, and it was great. I learned a lot, um, and they, they decided to keep me around for Frozen. Uh, okay. So that was my first big feature film. Yeah. Um, and it was, um, it was hard. It was really hard for me because at the time, I didn't know what I didn't know. And, excuse me, um, you know, I, coming from a, a small mom and pop studio in Nashville to um, LA super corporation Disney, <laughs> um, it was a bit of a culture shock, and mm. I had a, a I had a really difficult time kind of trying to figure out how to navigate the waters uh, politically, and I, you know I was so um, I was very stressed, I was mm. really stressed out, Larry, and. I think that I, I was so wound up that I started second guessing like everything that I was doing. Gotcha. Um, and so I was on frozen, uh, you know, till the, till the last half of it, I guess it was like six months. Um, and when, when the time came, they opted to not renew my contract, mm. um, which was, you know, which was fair. I get it. Um, you know, I, I, you know, they needed me to be at a certain level. And I, I just wasn't, I wasn't there. Gotcha. Um, I appreciate you talking about this though, because I, I I think some, it is, it's important because I think sometimes um, places put on a facade of what, you know, things should be like, and you go, there's, you know, you, you you said you kind of, it took you a while. I'm, you know, in my forties now and it's, it's taken me a while to get to where I'm at now, but it's, it's, Mm -hmm. um, it, I think it helps people to understand Hey, keep going. There's time. Yeah. Um, don't let, you know, uh, you know, situations like this feel like, you know, you're derailed. Just keep moving along here. Um, so yeah. I appreciate you kind of opening up about that. Yeah, man. I mean, I've basically, you'll, I'll tell you the whole story, man. I've made an entire career of falling forward. You know? <laughs> it's, uh, uh, you know, failing forward. Um, there you go. You know, so, uh, so yes, yeah, so they also did not renew my contract and they told me, I, you know, I mean, they, um, they were really cool in the sense that they, they gave me plenty of time to get my, my ducks in a row and, uh, and all that, which was great. And I spent that time, I feel like I spent that time wisely by doing what I could to, to better myself there. But, um, at the time it was really devastating. I mean, I, I, I crocodile tears before mm. I got out to the parking lot. It's not every day you lose a dream job, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I went home and I, uh, I was super upset and I was really angry and I, I wrote this scathing email about how awful they were and how they made a mistake and, you know, it's not my fault. I'll be back. And that, yeah. and that. <laughs> and, um, I got it all out in this email and then I promptly deleted it. And instead I wrote, um, you know, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. I learned a lot from you guys. I got to stand on the shoulder of giants and animate a Disney princess film. And, you know, I'll never forget that. So thank you very much. Gotcha. And that's, yeah. that, that little story is really important and I'll get to it um, because it matters. And, <laughs> um, yeah. So you know, I, I, you know, I spent the rest of the night, I watched Rocky, you know, I got into a good headspace because I, you know, I'm going to spoil it for those who haven't seen it but it's like a 40 year old movie. So I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. no excuses. <laughs> but, you know, Rocky's this guy. He, he got a chance to go fight in the championship and he trains his, his, his ass off and he, he goes to, to fight the champ and he, he loses, he loses bad, you know? Um, but that wasn't the point. The point is, is that he got up That's right. and, he, and he, and he kept going. 
you know? Um, and so that's, I kind of figured that's what I got to do, right? Mm -hmm. I just got to keep going. Cause I got my metric for success, right? I got to, I got to feed my family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what I'm doing so long as I'm doing that. So I, um, I go back to work the next day. Um, you know, one of the supervisors was like, Oh, I really appreciate you sending that email. It was a really nice thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I spent the next two months of my contract, the last two months of my contract, um, doing, doing an animation test, um, and then finishing up on frozen. And what's interesting about that is that I, um, you know, I, up until up to that point, I was like super stressed out. Right. Um, but then the worst thing that could happen did happen. So, and the sun came up the next day. Mm -hmm. So all of that stress was kind of gone. It, it was replaced with a new stress of finding a new job, but the stress right. of being at Disney was gone. And I ended up doing some of the best work I'd done after the back time I was there. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so that's kind of an interesting thing. No, that's, that's a great, great uh, point there. Um, second guessing yourself is, uh, what's what that saying? Um, the analysis of paralysis, you know, mm -hmm. where it's just constantly overthinking something. And because of that, you know, not doing what you would be able to just naturally do what you've been trained yeah. to do. Yeah. You got to trust your gut. Yeah. You know, and even if your gut's wrong, you still got to kind of, you know, lean into it at least the first time. Yeah. If yeah. Wrong, I'll tell you. Yep. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so, um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm finishing up the contract, but I'm looking for a new job and, um, and I'm trying to figure stuff out. And then a friend of mine, Seagraph had, was coming the next week. And a friend of mine, um, had an interview with blue sky and they couldn't make it. And they were like, you know what? You should just take my spot. I'm like, can I do that? <laughs> and they're like, screw it. Why not? You know? And I'm like, all right. And so I, um, and I, I, I know that I knew the recruiter, um, and the only reason why I tell this story, I don't, I do not recommend doing this, <laughs> but I knew the recruiter. Um, and so I, um, I thought I could get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so at the day of the interview at his, in his time slot, I just show up and I knock on the door and they're like, who are you? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, Oh, you know, he couldn't make it, but, but I'm here. And they're like, well, are you any good? And I'm like, well, I'm coming from Disney. And they're like, all right, okay, that's good. Yeah, well, yeah. Just worked uh, on a so, movie that made, you know, billions of dollars. Hey, that's all. Yeah. On Frozen. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so they um so they invite me in and uh I meet the I meet the the animator. Um and he just he's one of the supervisors on an upcoming movie and um they ended up giving me a job. Um which was which was great. That's killer, um, yeah. You know, and so I ended up going to Blue Sky to work on Rio too. Okay. That was a fun yeah. one. Yeah, it was cool. I had a, I had a really great experience. It was, well, it was kind of, it was kind of half and half. Um, I had, I had a really great experience at the studio, but my wife and kids were still in LA. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And so we were, um, it was really tricky because it was only supposed to be like a, a two month contract and mm. it ballooned into a five month contract. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Which is so, good work wise, but yeah, trying to plan for something that was you thought was two months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that was um that was stressful. It was uh, really stressful. And you know, a lot of people, you know, that's that's the situation for a lot of people, especially mm -hmm. the, the ones trying to break in. You know, right, right. Like you gotta bounce around and stuff like that. A lot of us have families. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that's you know, that's for the younger animators trying to make that work, you know, you gotta have when you're in that scenario, you got to have a, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of trust and a lot of faith and a lot of, uh, you got to have a strong support partner there. And yeah. support and all that. Um, yeah. You know, um, you know, ultimately you just got to do what's best for, for you and yours, you know? Right. Um, but it was, it was tough. Um, and again, you know, like that was a five month contract and, um, it didn't, it didn't, there was no room at the end. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so we, we had to move on from there. And, uh, my wife and I both decided at that time, like, you know, we can bounce around. You have, you know, your, they let you take your job with you. So we have that, um, that ability yeah. to kind of yeah. work with. Um, but wherever we go, we're going to, we're going to stay together because that sucked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can imagine almost half a year. <laughs> yeah. So, um, 
So from was there, there anything you, different that you uh, kind of learned at that studio, particularly oh. production wise? It have been a, you know different style of animation and um, was yeah. it difficult for you to get your bearings initially, or was the ramp up decent for you? Yeah, with this particular show, I mean, the, the animation style was, um, you know, going from humans to birds was, you know, there's a bit of a learning curve there, but mm -hmm. they provided a, a super substantial amount of reference material and um, the, the leads were really cool on it. And, um, you know, the, it was a sequel, so it had the benefit of a first film. Yeah, to, good point. To kind of look at and, you know, kind of glean uh, who those characters are. Right, and, right. Um, you know, so it was it was a it was a fun show. I mean, the the atmosphere, the culture is um, is is different. Um, you know, that's that's the thing. Like one of the things I've learned about bouncing around from studio to studio is just every studio has its own culture, right? Um, and uh, some people, you know, depending on what type of person you are, um, how you fit into that culture um, can can kind of dictate how your time goes there. Okay. Um, you know, like some people can be really successful at Disney, um, but maybe, you know, have a really difficult time at, at Blue Sky or, or Pixar. You can be really successful at Pixar, maybe struggle at Blue Sky and mm. Disney. And it, those things don't necessarily have anything to do with the quality of your animation. It's more just kind of how you fit within, within that, within that culture. Gotcha. Any uh, advice you'd give? I mean, that's obviously it's, boils down to personality, but I mean, anything that, you know, I, I go back to, you know, you, instead of writing the scaling uh, email, you put it in yeah. perspective and you wrote something nice here. So I mean, is there anything advice wise that you go, yeah. Hey, you know, jumping into a new studio, these are some of the things I've learned. Um, just, just be somebody that people like to work with. Mm. Right. Um, you know, don't, don't go in anywhere half cocked. Don't go in somewhere where you think you're going to show them how awesome you are uh, because you know, every, every, you know, as awesome as you are, I guarantee you there's somebody in that studio <laughs> that can animate circles around you. Um, <laughs> you know, so don't, don't do that. Um, young animators, when they tend, when they come into a new studio, they tend to want to uh, prove themselves. Mm. And, and that's, that's a great mentality to have, but the way they approach it is they kind of, do this with their stuff and they're like, I'm not ready to show anybody. I, I want them to, I want to put my best foot forward. I don't want to, if I should ask questions that shows weakness. Mm. Um, and it's, it's actually quite the opposite, right? It's when yeah. you, it's when you go to, when you go to this new studio and you're like, Hey, I got this shot. Um, you find an, you, you, you ask questions like, Hey, what do you think? You go to somebody's office that you respect or it's you know or, or whoever. And you start asking questions. You know, like, does this fit, fit the style of the show? Um, you know, would, would, what can I do better to make this shot more readable? Is this clear? Mm. Um, you know, and it's, it's more of just kind of interacting with them and getting to know them uh, as a professional and um, kind of showing that you're hungry to learn and to grow. Gotcha. Uh, because when you're, when you're doing this, nobody gets to know you, right? Mm. And if you show it and nobody's seen it and it's not clear, that's going to say something about you. Right, right. right. Um, whereas if you're, if you're showing people and you're like getting to know them uh, and you're, you're getting that feedback from them and then you show it, um, you know, what happens is, is that they start rooting for you. Mm, you know, that's cool. Like, oh, look at look at what so and so did. Um, yeah, that looks really great. That reads really clear mm. because you got feedback on it, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you show two or three animators and that you're like, and it reads to them, it's going to read better in the room. Gotcha. But if you haven't shown it to anybody, it's not, and it, and you don't know if it reads or not until somebody looks at it. And if uh -huh. it doesn't read, then they're going to be like, oh, they probably should have asked for help with that. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Very, very good. So, um, now, so you worked on Rio too. Was you stayed there for the Peanuts movie as well? Mm -hmm. No, that contract <clears throat> that contract ended. Okay, that's yeah. Um, okay, you did mention that. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so, um, I was kind of looking around, looking around and, um, uh, I got an opportunity to go to, to Montreal and work in, uh, live action visual effects. And I'd Would never, I'd never really, um, I, you know, I knew that I really wanted to do feature animation. I never really mm -hmm. considered visual effects, but I thought, you know what, maybe, you know, worst comes to worst, it just makes me a, a more well-rounded animator, mm -hmm. right? Just having that experience. Yeah. Um, and so, and I was like, oh, you know, Canada, let's check it out. Yeah. Um, never been there. It's a great opportunity to. Right up to, from New York there to too. Place. My kids came with me um, and we were really looking forward to it. And then we show up on December 28th. Cold. Which, um, yeah, which <laughs> ended up being the coldest day on record in like 20 years. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh man, I hope we didn't make a mistake. Um, because it was cold. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, like working, I was working at NPC. Okay. And uh, I started working off on, um, started working on Cinderella. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Which was, which was okay. It was fun. It was, a, it was a good experience. Um, and then I also did, um, goosebumps. Uh, I was on that for like a month and then I did that really crappy, fantastic four film. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, which was, which was honestly that, that was a, a really great learning experience. <clears throat> that's what, okay. That's, that's the part I do like about this is, you know, no matter how the show is turning out or how well it does, you go, there's something you're going to learn from this. No question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what was um, it that you learned on this one? This one was really, um, it was, it was, uh, it was um, rebuilding a foundation. I, um, I got through Cinderella just fine. Uh, Goosebumps, I was just kind of doing some development stuff. And so there was, there was not a whole lot to that one. But when I got to Fantastic Four, um, you're, you know, you're doing uh, hyper real. I was on the, the Thing team. Oh, okay. Um, you know, and if anybody doesn't know, he's a, you know, he's a 2,000 pound a uh, guy made out of rocks and um, it's hyper realistic animation um, and it's uh, in a visual effects film. Right. Um, and so I, I do my normal, um, my normal uh, workflow on, on a shot and it's a, it never, the whole sequence got cut, but it was a, it was a shot of uh, the thing walking uh, past a car and he rips a hood off and he throws it or something. I don't know. He ripped a hood off a car, and I, and I do my normal workflow on it, and I show it to the supervisor, um, and he's a French guy, and he's very French and very straightforward, and he's like, I'm not going to do the accent, but he, uh, <laughs> he's like, there's something wrong with this. It's not working. Um, try this, this, and this, and I'm like, okay, and so I go back to my desk, and I, I do that. The next day, I show him, and he's like, yeah, there's something, something off about it. I don't know what it is. Uh, he's like, uh, let's go take a look at it. And I, we go back to my desk and, um, and I start showing him, uh, you know, my scene, my, my play blast and all that. And he's like, no, 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 scoot over. Let me sit down. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah, let me sit down. And it, I'd never had that happen to me. Before. It's usually <laughs> like you look at my shot and you give me, give me notes. notes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he started digging around in my Maya scene and, uh, and he's like, uh, he's like, oh, I know what the problem is. And I'm like, what? He's like, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm like, man. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, look, man. He's like, this isn't working in 3D space. And he's like showing me all this stuff. And, um, and he was absolutely right. Like I, um, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was simply animating to the camera and I wasn't, um, I wasn't working in a way that was conducive to um, – <laughs> Uh, 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 correcting, correcting physicality and correcting, um, uh, 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 making adjustments. Okay. It was working very sloppy. Very okay. Sloppy. Um, and he called me out on it and he was like, but you know, the best thing about it was he's like, don't worry about it. He's like, I'm going to help you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. All right. And I could have done, I could have taken that two ways. I could have right. been like, screw you, dude. I'm, I'm a Disney animator. I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I could have gotten a big attitude about it or I could have said, okay, cool. I'm totally open to what you have to say. If you're right. going to show me something that's going to help me, I want to learn it. Right, right. And that's the route I took. And so for the next week, 
um, he sat down and he worked with me and he helped me kind of work out a new workflow that, you know, that, that he was teaching me how to, which keyframe to, to use, how to, how to um, manipulate your curves to where you're, you're not necessarily having to create six keys to make it art, mm. you know? And it's, it was just, it was more just scene hygiene, you know, and just working in a very simple way that if you got to make, if you got to make some adjustments, you just kind of move a couple uh, tangents around curves, yeah. and you've got a new pose. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. Um, which is just something I never, I never learned, you know, right. I'm always, I'm, I was more concerned about, um, you know, the, the choices and the acting and the, does it look pretty? You know? <laughs> I wasn't so much worried about what was going on under the hood. Now, was that something that was specific to VFX or is that something that you've now taken just in general as your, you know, yeah. or at least at that time as your workflow? Yeah, I took that. I took, uh, I took it on as best as I could. I mean, I took, you know, and that's the thing about stuff like that, right? You just kind of take what you need out mm -hmm. of it to right. you kind of work it into your workflow and you just make the, the adjustments to, um, make it work for you. And so that's gotcha. kind of what I did. Um, and the rest of the show was pretty successful. Um, however, like I said, uh, you know, Montreal was insanely cold. Mm. Um, and so like it was, <laughs> my kids would walk to school and, uh, they would be so cold that they would cry. And then they would, and then their tears would freeze. That's how cold it was. <laughs> so, um, you know, if my family was just like the first opportunity we get, we're going back. To we're the done. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it just well, so happened. A, like, what's up? I say they've got a good story though. They can talk to their kids and say, Hey, you know, when I was your age, yeah, yeah. I, I had her walk to school and we cried and those turned to icicles. <laughs> yeah. We walked 10 miles in the snow. That's right. <laughs> uphill both ways. Um, <laughs> But it, yeah, I mean, looking back on it, it's a great experience when you're going through it, man, it, it was rough. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, so, so in towards the end of, or I guess towards the middle of fantastic four, um, blue sky had an opportunity to come work on peanuts. And, okay. You know, I was like, Oh, I had a great time last time and my family's ready to go. And, um, you know, it, not that I wanted to, to leave fantastic four, but, I knew that movie was going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> so it was no, you know, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to, um, I, I didn't feel like I was going to regret um, making it, making it a, a shift. Gotcha. Um, so and back we, in the feature, what you, you know, feature yeah, animation, what you wanted to do anyway. Which is, which is where my heart was anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, plus it's peanuts and, you know, Ch um, Charles Schultz is a, heck yeah. You know, he's a hero and, um, you know, it, it looked like what Blue Sky was doing with it was uh, really interesting and mm -hmm. fairly innovative, and uh, it would just seem like a very cool experience. Yeah. So, or opportunity, um, and so I went back, and this 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 time it was a little different. Um, I didn't quite have as good of a time as I did the previous time. Okay. Um, it, and I can't really pinpoint exactly why that was. Um, I think it was just. Um, it, like the way I wasn't, I wasn't, um, yeah, it was weird. Um, I just didn't feel like I was growing. I didn't feel like I was getting a lot of opportunities to, to show my, my best foot. Um, was I it the time I of was, production where you're kind of having to just get some stuff done and, you know, not necessarily at the beginning where you may be able to kind of ramp up and they're, they're kind of throwing you in the deep end and I've, we've got to get these shots done. Was that? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think what it was for me is that, um, you know, a lot of times when you come into a new studio, the first shot you do kind of dictates your time, like the mm. quality of shots you get while you're there. Okay. Um, and I just, I literally was working on a, a 4,000 pound, uh, hyper realistic superhero on a Friday. <laughs> and then on Monday, I'm animating Charlie Brown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that was a bit of a, a hard transition for me. Mm -hmm. So that that first test, I kind of struggled with. I eventually got it, but I struggled. Uh, gotcha. Right uh, and so I feel like they uh, they did. I didn't earn their trust. Okay. Um, which is which is it's it's harder from from get that it back. position. It's harder to to get it back. Right? Gotcha. Um, and so like I was as I was getting cash shots, typically in that scenario, what you want to happen is they, they give you something, you do really well on it. They give you something else a little more challenging, you do well on it. You do something, they give you something a little more challenging. But in this case, what was happening is I would, 
I would do a thing and maybe I did well with it. I, if I, I didn't know if I was doing well or not because I wasn't necessarily getting good feedback one way or the other. Okay. It was just like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is good. And then they would send it on and it, it was just kind of weird how the feedback was, was, uh, was delivered. Gotcha. Um, and so, uh, so, and from that situation, what happened is you would get a shot and you'd think, Oh, like, Oh yeah, this is a little more challenging. This is great. But then the next shot you would get would be something that wasn't challenging, uh, like in the slightest. And you'd okay. think, Oh, did I, did I screw that up? Did I not, <laughs> did I not do well? Is this just the, the casting that they're going with? I, you know, like, is, am I just filling a need right now? Like, right. What's, what's going on, you know? Um, and so it was just a little difficult to kind of gauge where I was at. Mm. Um, and in this scenario, uh, where usually you get kind of placed, they, they just got, they have this thing called Tempro. Uh, and, and that's where they put the, the animators that are, uh, on contract. Mm. Um, in this case, um, that they were, they had brought on so many for this show that I was kind of, uh, sitting off to the side, <laughs> um, away from the team. And I don't think it was, I, I don't get me wrong. Not I don't intentional. Think it was yeah, just, it wasn't intentional. It wasn't anything against me. It was just, we got to put him somewhere. Let's put right. him here. Right. And there were, and there were opportunities in the Cintiq room. Um, we did a room cause there was a lot of uh, 2d animation happening. On oh, right. Yeah. Um, so there, there were animators in and out of there and I did get to meet new people and, and have, <laughs> uh, cool conversations and stuff like that. But it was just, it was just a different scenario, a different vibe. <laughs> Um, and, and that happens, uh, on every show. Gotcha. Uh, every show has different leadership, uh, different set of problems, different set of, uh, producers and, and, and interactions. And so it's, it's always something new on the menu. Mm. Um, and that happens at every studio. Gotcha. Um, so it, at the time it was shocking, um, because it was such a stark contrast from the last time I was there. Mm. But in, in hindsight, I'm like, Oh, okay. That makes sense because I'd never Just, been anywhere where I worked right. on two shows, you know? And so it was kind of a new concept. Nothing to compare to us to, huh? Seen it a few times. I'm like, Oh yeah. Okay. So every show is going to be different. Uh, and some shows are going to be, uh, some shows you're going to be successful. Uh, and some shows you're not going to be successful. And that's not necessarily, again, it goes back to the culture thing. Each show has its own culture. Mm. And if you like your animation, your, your ability to animate doesn't really change, but it, how you fit into the, the new show, um, may, it, you may or may not be as successful. It's very, gotcha. it's very bizarre. Mm. It's, uh, but it, it's interesting. Got to be able to adapt huh, and be flexible. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's totally key. I mean, as far as even attitude wise, where you're like, you're saying you're not having to stress out and second guess yourself. Cause you're just like, okay, this is kind of, is what it is, right? Yeah, this is what it is. And you kind of have to, you know, you, uh, you have to recognize like, it's never really, uh, it's not, it's not you, right. It's, it's the things happening around you and how you fit into it. You know, um, not every show is going to be your show. And that's okay. That doesn't mean you're a bad animator or a great animator. It just means that, um, you know, it's, it, you know, people draw differently people, you know, it, uh, here's the thing you give a, you give, um, five cooks the same recipe and you're going to get five different, they can follow the recipe Flavors exactly and the same. Yeah, it's going to yeah. taste differently. Right? right. Um, and depending on what that thing is, um, you know, is, is, is whether or not you're going to be successful at cooking it. Right. Gotcha. Um, and it's kind of the same way, right? Like I, I had a really great, uh, show on toy story four. Um, I had a great time. I, you know, I, I, I felt like I really grew as an animator That's on cool. that show on, uh, on this last one onward. Um, I really struggled. Okay. Um, and it's, and it was, and it's not necessarily, um, my skill sets. I see. Yeah. Not like you suddenly couldn't animate. <laughs> yeah. It's not, no, all of a sudden I couldn't animate. It was just, you know, it was just trying to hit the, the style of the animation, um, interpreting the notes, um, finding the sensibilities of the director. You know, when you're working with a director, um, every one of them is different. 
And so when you, you know, sometimes you immediately click and you can, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm. Uh, whereas sometimes you're like, Hi, what are you talking about? What do you, what is that? What does that note mean? How do I interpret that? Gotcha. You know, and so it, it's also, it comes down to their, their ability to see, right? Uh, you know, something like Brad Bird, you know, you can show him two poses and he's like, I totally get where you're going. Got it. Yeah. Keep going. yeah. Uh, whereas another director needs to see it broken down onto fours before they can start giving you notes. Mm. So, yeah. Well, let's talk about Toy Story 4 because um, that's recently come out on uh, home entertainment, whether it be digital or, or hard copy. Um, I loved it. I thought oh, it was okay. fantastic. Um, awesome. You know, I, I, the Toy Stories have a formula per se to a certain degree. Um, but yeah, I just, it was, I actually, I'll, I'll put it this way. I was, I love Toy Story 3. This one here was one of those ones I was kind of more surprised at how much I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. A lot of it had to do with also just even, um, and I, I recently saw something on the uh, camera uh, choices that they used, um, but the lighting was just, it was just a beautiful, beautiful film. Um, and then obviously the animation's top notch. So, uh, it just, it was a great complete package for me. It was just a lot of fun. So yeah, it may have not been like, I guess I was the same formula as far as the toys, but so it wasn't, you know, this groundbreaking as the first one, but it was just, it was very entertaining, great story and just mm -hmm. beautiful. Thanks man. Yeah. It yeah. was, um, it took a, it took the long way around, man, for we uh, working on it. We were all a little worried for a long time. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, aside from, cause you know, I mean, there's that big, that big elephant in, in the room of why are we making a toy story for <laughs> nobody's asking for this, you know? Um, and then with, with John leaving, it was his idea, you know, to do another, another film. And then he brought on a co-director and then, uh, and then he left the studio, right. Um, which left it in, uh, Josh Cooley's hands. Mm. And, uh, you know, that, that film, it, it, it really struggled to kind of find its feet. Mm. Um, and in, in one way you, you worry because it is the flagship title. Right. right? Um, but then you, you also have to um, trust the process because it's like that for every film. I've mm -hmm. never worked on it. There's only two films that I've ever worked on that were solid right out of the gate. Which um, were? Coco. Um, and one of my favorites. Yeah, Coco was, Coco was solid from the get go, um, and um, uh, this this last one that's coming out, it was very okay. good, very early. Cool. Um, you know, and usually, usually these films um, they suck until they uh, either you know the last screening or two last two screenings, and then it takes a turn. You're like, oh, this is pretty good, <laughs> or they don't yeah. get better at all. <laughs> so, yeah um, i have ed catmull's book uh creative ink where he, he calls it the ugly baby right yeah. yeah yeah so it's the ugly baby it's you hey you got to trust the process it's going to get better it's going to get prettier um yeah. so that's funny that you mentioned that yeah um yeah and it, you know it was um and the to josh's testament that had to be a significant amount of pressure no question yeah i mean it is it is the the, the big flagship title it's the fourth one and uh you know he's he's trying to make um trying to make a unique and original film with his voice mm. but it's filtered through the voice of the people who came before it right right you know so he's uh trying to honor honor the films that came before and also say something new um, now just out of curiosity he, um and again i don't want you to give any way Sure. I don't want you to get you in trouble, so um, yeah. you can just mention if you can't talk about it. But what would be what was the process then of of Josh getting picked up? What was it? You know, this is obviously like you mentioned a big flagship. You have someone like John Lasser, who's a, a staple in the company. Leave. Mm -hmm. This is a huge endeavor. What was it then that how Josh would well, come in I, to fill his shoes? I could I could be wrong, but um, but I believe he was the head of story. Okay. Um, so it just made and then, sense. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so when, when, the, when the directors, when their time is kind of split, um, sometimes they like to bring on co-directors. Um, the two-director format uh, has kind of been successful at Disney, and so they mm -hmm. started to employ it at Pixar. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if that's, that's my interpretation of it. Okay. I don't know. There might be some things in there that I'm, I'm not aware of or missing. Um, 
but it seems like um, it's easier to kind of spread the workload around when there's uh, when there's two directors. Gotcha. Um, and so he, I believe, he was promoted from head of story. Okay. Don't quote me on that, but gotcha. That sounds best you can. That remember. sounds pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Let's go with that. Um, yeah, and so that's kind of how he how he landed it. Okay. Um, um, now, so from Toy Story Four. You finished up on Onward, which obviously we can't talk anything about yet. Uh, Trailer came out today. Yes, that was very cool. Yeah. Was it pretty cool to work with those voice actors? Um, or is it more yeah. challenging because they're so iconic, or at least recognizable now? Um, no, no, no. It's um, no, it's um, it's really fun to go back and watch their um, uh, their PDX, their their okay. um, their recording sessions. Mm. Um, it's it's a great source of reference because you can kind of see like what they do when they deliver the line. Interesting. Um, and like what the kind of faces they make and things like that. So there's a lot to, that you can glean from that. Okay. Um, I thought, I thought the line reads in this one were pretty good. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, I don't get to meet them. You know, yeah. they're just a, you know, so it's just a, it's just a voice for me, but. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I thought they did great. Was there anything in Toy Story 4 that you just really enjoyed? Yeah. Um, I, I got to, um, when, um, when you start on a show, you, you generally, um, you get to, um, you used to have a sit down with the leads and, uh, with the directing animators and you, um, they talk to you about like, well, what are you, what are you working on now? What do you want to do as, as an animator? What do you think is going to help you grow? Are there any mm. particular characters that you gravitate to that you would like to work on? Um, and so you just, you have that conversation and it's, it's a pretty frank and honest conversation. Um, in this case, I told them that I, I really wanted to work uh, more with Woody, um, that he was, he's my, my guy and I, I, I want to work with him. And, um, you know, up until that point, I hadn't really gotten a chance to do a lot of, um, physical acting. Um, you know, it's usually been, um, you know, shorter, um, you know, more connective tissue shots. And this was right after I got promoted okay. uh, to animator. Uh, when I came into Pixar, I was on the fix team and then I got promoted to, uh, which is kind of where everybody comes in, even if okay. you do have experience. Um, most of the time, sometimes you get brought in as different things. But in my case, I came in as a fixer. Um, and then I did crowds and I did that for two or three films. And so Toy Story 4 was my first film being promoted to animated. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. A little backstory there. Um, and, and so I wanted to do more, more physical acting and, uh, you know, something that I could really challenge myself with. And so they, um, and they were, they, they honored that, you know, they gave me um, a lot of, uh, every shot I worked on had Woody in it. I, uh, the scene of um, the the chunk of uh, Woody and Forky walking through the antique store looking uh -huh. for that character. Uh -huh. um, I'll, I'll, up until um, from the moment they get into the antique store, all the way up to um, where they uh, have their their run in with Gabby Gabby. Wow, um, that's that's all me. Um, Very cool. <laughs> yeah, and it was so much fun, man. It was so much fun. Um, what a neat opportunity too, because you look at Toy Story, like we said, it's just the flagship for you to be able to, you know, how long was the first 95 mm -hmm. more than 20 years later mm -hmm. to be able to work on these characters. That is very, very cool. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it, it was, I never, I never, it, I had to pinch myself. Quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. I never thought I would be in that kind of position to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was such a, it was such an honor. Yeah. You know, like, um, it, it was, it was to, to have an intimate relationship with, with those characters was, was, uh, was, it was honestly, it was probably the highlight of my career. Very cool. Yeah. Now what was most, uh, uh, challenging on that show then? Um, I, you know, I mean, aside from like the typical animation struggles, um, it wasn't, it wasn't that difficult of a show. Okay. I mean, um, yeah, I think towards the end of it, it got a little crunchy. Um, so it was just kind of making sure that you're still sustaining the same level of quality, mm. uh, even if you're, you're just dog tired. 
Um, so that was really kind of the biggest challenge. I mean, they're, they're toys, so they're not, the, the controls are pretty limited. Um, you're not adding all of this extra um, weight and fleshiness mm. and things that you would normally add because these are toys. And they right, right. Um, gotcha. and in fact, oftentimes, you know, you'd show something and they'd be like, bring it back, bring it back. It's a toy. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, um, oh, that's funny. So in that aspect, it was, um, it was, it was just, it was just pure fun, man. Uh, I, I can't, I mean, you know, like, I'll give you for instance, there was, um, the, towards the tail end of that shot, uh, of that sequence in the antique store, um, he, they, they come to a stop, they can't find the person they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so they, they come to a stop and, and Woody strikes this very cowboy pose and, you know, he flips his hat and, uh, you know, and pulls this whole John Wayne thing. And he's like, uh, you know, I, I don't think they're in here. Come on, let's go. Uh, and it was, it was just, it was really fun to kind of think about Woody is like, well, what is he? Well, primarily he's, he's the leader of the group, right? Uh -huh. um, but he's, he's a toy, uh, but he's also a cowboy. Right. So it was, it was kind of fun to kind of dig into those cowboy sense of it's that specificity, right? Yeah. It's like, how would how would Woody come to this stop and deliver this line? Well, he would right, do it right. like a cowboy. Yeah. You know? That's uh, great. Buzz would do it completely different. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay, I got to ask you this too. You said each studio, you know, has their own personalities. and personalities. What was it at Pixar that you've um, been most instrumental into your career? Um, I think, well, it's, it, it, it's, I think there's two things. Uh, one is, is more quantifiable, the other one not so much. Um, by the time I got to Pixar, I had, I had done Blue Sky, I went to another studio, uh, and, then I, and then I ended up at Pixar. So it was maybe f uh, ten, 10 years of working in studios before I got to Pixar. Okay. Um, so by the time I got to Pixar, I was very, I was comfortable as a professional animator. Okay. Um, and I, um, when I was at Disney, I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, by the time I got to Pixar, I kind of figured out all the things that I needed to know to be uh, successful uh, in that kind of environment. Right. Um, like the, the things to do and things not to do, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went into Pixar with a little bit more confidence um, than any of the other studios. Not okay. confidence of being like, I'm awesome. Right. But... I confidence in like, okay, I know, I know what to expect. Mm -hmm. uh, and if this happens, I can do this. If that happens, I can do that. You know? Um, so that, that is a little more, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a little more, uh, um, I don't know what the word is, but um, that, that helped quite a bit. Gotcha. Um, the other thing is that uh, culturally, um, they're incredibly supportive. Mm. Um, everybody, everybody there, the animation team, uh, is all very well aware of how difficult it is to get there, mm. um, and how um, how hard every single person has worked to get there. Mm. And so, the minute you get there, um, they all treat you with respect. That's cool. They treat you um, as a as a colleague, and they treat you like you deserve to be there. And now that sort of stuff happens at other studios too, but it's very, um, it, it's, it's very apparent at Pixar. Okay. Um, more holistic. And, yeah. It's a little, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And everybody is just super supportive and, um, you know, they more than willing to give you opportunities and help. And, um, you know, in my experience, I found that if you, if you do struggle, if you do, um, if you, if you have a, a, a difficult shot and you struggle with it and you have to show it a few more than a couple times, um, that kind of plays against you, mm -hmm. um, because they're, they're moving at such a fast pace and, um, you know, there's so many other factors involved that they don't have the, the stability, uh, right. to, to kind of let you to accommodate that. Yeah. To accommodate that. Yeah. That's yeah. Thank you. Um, where at Pixar, they kind of do. Um, and so it's, you know, they, they give you the time and the space and the opportunity to, um, to grow. Uh, that's and great. It's a, it's a, it's a luxury that doesn't, I doesn't really exist at a lot of other studios. Gotcha. 
No, that's great. Or you've been there for how long? August. What's that? You've been there for how long? Three years in August. All so right. a little over three years. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Well, I want to end off on one more thing here because I think this is pretty cool too because it kind of also goes into maybe what you're kind of doing there at Pixar. I know they've had, you know, um, Sparks program. Is that what it's called? The, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Because one of the cool things that I think makes you, you unique is during your time here at iAnimate, you're able to do uh, directing on the short, yeah. Uh, yeah. what was that one? Uh, Story, Estray. Yeah, Estray. Yeah. Where, yeah. where, did, that, where did that come about? Um, do you see yourself developing more? Do you have more stories and that's the direction you want to get going or how does that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Stray, Stray was my, my attempt to stand out. Uh, in, in a field of, in a school of animators that are already standing out, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, I really desperately wanted to make a short film and, um, it kind of presented an opportunity, the school kind of presented an opportunity to do that. Um, Jason was very supportive of it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, gave me a lot of encouragement and support and, um, the assets to kind of make it happen. Um, as well as, as the studio I was, I was at, um, mm, yeah. they were very cool about, um, rendering, it all their, out, their yeah. rendering farm and, and, uh, you know, and, and listing some of the, the help there to, yeah. to work on it. And they let me do it on the clock at times when we were slow. So, um, so it was a really great opportunity and, uh, um, a lot of people, uh, gosh, there was like 25 animators from all over the world helping yep, yep. out with it. Um, yeah. So it was really, really cool, really exciting. Um, and a great learning experience and, um, and yeah, you know, and it's, um, it was really well received, uh, on the public. Yeah. Um, so that was, so that was nice. And, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's something I would love to get back to. And yeah, with the, with the Sparks program at Pixar, there's, um, there's absolutely opportunities for that. Gotcha. Um, that's kind of what it's intended for. And I got to. I got a couple of things on my sleeve. All right. <laughs> Good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, I was looking at your IMDB and also I came down to that. I'm like, I remember that. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's a cool opportunity. Um, and hopefully, you know, you got studios like uh, Pixar who are trying to afford opportunities for people to do that. So that's it. That's cool. Yeah. I got, I got the chance to work on one uh, last year or earlier this year. Um, that's going to be, I think it'll be coming out. I don't know if I can say when it'll be coming out or okay. later, but yeah, we don't want to get you in um, any trouble. <laughs> yeah. But what was, what was great about that experience is that, you know, I, I cut my teeth in a small, in a small studio. Um, and in this case it was, um, it was a small team working on these little shorts. There's maybe, um, you know, I think there was maybe 10 or 12 of us. Um, and so, uh, getting to work on a small project, uh, inside of a, a, such a large organization, Mm -hmm. um, was really cool because you, you, when it's small like that, you have a, your voice is louder, you know? Okay. Um, and so you, you get to have a lot of input on how the thing plays out. It's very collaborative. Yeah. Um, and it, it just reminded me of, of those, the working on that short film and, you know, working at, at the small studios and, uh, it was nice, you know, like that's a, it's a working on the big films are fantastic and it's right. great, but working in a smaller, um, more, more intimate environment is, is also very, very appealing. So, it has its own pluses too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great. Absolutely. Well, Andrew, like I said, I just really appreciate, um, we, we, this is going to be probably about our 68th podcast. Oh, cool. We've had just some great guests, but it's always neat too, to get guys like you who are our alumni who started out through iAnimate and now, you know, look at what you're doing. And it's just, it's a neat testimony to, um, what hard work does and, and dedication and being able to provide I animate, you know, with, uh, solid instructors to help you guys out. So yeah, man. really I, just I appreciate not, your time. Thank you, man. I could not have done it without I animate. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm so appreciative of all the, all the stuff that, that you guys uh, put into, to making this thing, uh, available to people like me. Yeah. So, yeah. Be able um, to do it from Tennessee or wherever, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool, Andrew. Well, the best of luck to you. I'm sure we'll get you in at another point, but really do just appreciate your time. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right.